All right, 41. Is the graph that of a function, of a one-to-one -one function? Yes, no, maybe, or none of the choices. So take a look at the graph of this one, of this cubic function. Is it one-to-one? -one? So to determine if a function, if the graph is a, is that of a one-to-one -one function, um, by the vertical line test, you could see that this is in fact a function because the vertical line, wherever you will draw, it will pass in at most uh, one point. However, to determine if it's one-to-one, -one, we will employ what we call horizontal line test. And if you could see here, Whichever part of the graph you will draw a horizontal line, if it if it intersects the graph in at most one point, then it is one-to-one. -one. You could see here by drawing this particular horizontal line, it intersected the graph in three points. Since it intersected the graph in more than one point, so this one is not a graph of a one-to-one -one function. Letter B. Okay, 42. I hope you're having a great time so far. Consider the mapping as shown. What is true about it? Is it one-to-one, -one, onto, bijective, or not a function? When we say bijective, by the way, it means both one-to-one -one and onto. Did you answer A, B, C, or D? Let's see if you got it right. But we have to remember this. A relation is a function if every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one element in the codomain or sometimes to your range, depending if it because it's possible that your codomain and range are equal sets. But if you could see from here, there is an element in your domain, which is 10, which is not mapped in any element in your set B. Since 10, which is an element of A, is not mapped to any element in B, then the mapping, this mapping, is not a function in the first place. Letter D. So if it's not a function, of course, we cannot tell it. Of course, it, we cannot say that it could be. We, we don't need to test if it's one-to-one, -one, onto, or bijective. So letter D is the correct answer. However, if the 10 here is mapped with 13, so this will be both one-to-one -one and onto, so this will be bijective if there is a mapping from 10 to 13. 43. Let the mapping from R to R, such that f of x equals 2x plus 1, is f surjective. Yes, no, maybe, or cannot be. Surjective means onto. So in this case, uh, for every element of in the in your codomain, there should be a corresponding element in the domain. That's what we are trying to look into here. So is it yes, no, maybe, or cannot be? We will see. So to test if it is onto, we have to know that if for all y elements for all y, element of R, uh, I have to paste it here. I have to copy this so that to make this one more complete. That is for all y, element of your codomain R, there exists an x element of your domain R such that f of x equals y. So from here, I uh, remember it's f of x equals 2x plus 1. So I just replaced the, two, the f of x by y. That's why I have 2x plus 1 equals y. And our goal here is to solve for the value of x. So I subtracted both sides by 1. I have 2x equals y minus 1. But since my goal is to solve for x, that is why I divided both sides by 2. And I have x equals y minus 1 all over 2. Then you may ask yourself, is there a value of y in the codomain that will make this 
not a defined value? And the answer is no. Since your denominator is non-zero, so this will be real always. If the value of y is any real number, the value of x will be a real number as well. There's no chance that x could be undefined or imaginary. Since all values of y element of your codomain real numbers, of set of real numbers, have corresponding x in the set of uh, domain in the real numbers, then the mapping from the set of reals to set of reals with f of x equals 2x plus 1 is a surjective or other books call it an onto function. Letter A. Yes. 44. The following set operations are commutative exact. Union, intersection, difference, or symmetric difference. So which one is not commutative? In fact, remember this. Union is commutative. A union B is the same as B union A. Intersection is also commutative. A intersection B is the same as B intersection A. However, remember this. Set difference in general is not commutative. Because A minus B is not the same as B minus A. If you're talking about set difference. When we say set difference A minus B, that's part of A but not in B. However, if I have B minus A, that is part of B but not in A. That's why set difference is not commutative. Symmetric difference, um, A triangle B, in some books, uh, others use a different symbol. It's simply the union minus the intersection. And since union is commutative, and intersection is also commutative, symmetric difference is in fact commutative as well. Hence, set difference is not commutative, letter C. 45. Consider U with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and sets A with elements 1, 4, 7, and B with elements 1, 4, 9. Which of the following is true? Take note, this symbol is read as subset. So the thing is, which of these, A, B, C, and D, is correct? So if you are given this, remember, you could see here that all elements of A, 1, 4, 7, are also elements of U. We can say then that A is a subset of U or in symbols this one. Take note, if you see this symbol, it's understood that all elements of A are found in U. But does it mean that U, all elements of U are found in A? Not necessary. U might have some elements that are not present in A. But if you could take a look at B, 1, 4, 9, you could see that 1 is in U, 4 is in U, However, 9, which is an element of B, is not found in set U. Not all elements of B are in U. Hence, we can say that B is not a subset of U or in symbols. It's similar to this. It's just that there is a slash here to indicate that it is not an element, not a subset rather. So option B is correct. That is, A is a subset of U, letter D. 46. What is true of sets A and B? Are they joint, disjoint, proper sub? A is a proper subset of B, or A and B are equivalent sets? And is A correct? They are joint? No. When we say joint sets, they should have at least one common element. The correct answer here is B. They are disjoint because you could see the circles are not interlaced. So that means they do not have a common element. How about letter C? 
Letter C is also A is a proper subset of B. This is false because A is not a subset of B in the first place. Because if A is a subset of B, then circle A, the A here, the circle for A, should lie completely inside of B. For letter D, A and B are equivalent sets. This is also false. Why? Because we do not have any information on the cardinality of each set. Two sets are equivalent if they have the same cardinality or same number of elements. But we don't know how many there are per set. So D is something we cannot say as true. Hence, letter B is the correct answer. I hope you got it. 47. The union of set A in relation to its universal set U is? Is it A, U, A prime, or null set? So, A, since A is a... Uh, it says here that universe A in relation to its universal set. So it's understood that A is a subset of your U. And remember this. The union of a set and its universal set is always the universal set. Or in symbols, A union U equals U. Letter B. Why is that so? Because... Um, there are U has some elements that is not present in A. So I'm sure that everything in U will be the union of A and the universal set. 48. Given that your universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, your A is 1, 3, 7, 9, and B is 3, 7, 8, 10, find the complement of A union B. So pause the video if you wish and check which of A, B, C, or D is correct. All right, let's do this. So since you are look, going to look for A union B prime, you have to perform first what is inside the parenthesis, which is A union B, right? So you will take, you will just simply combine their elements, but do not copy the element more than once. So the union of A and B is 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. But we're talking about prime or the complement of A union B. And when we speak about the complement, it is the set of all elements found in U but not in the given set. So, we will get all the elements found in U, but not in A union B. That's why, what are the elements here? We have two, we have four, we have five, and we have six. Hence, letter C is the correct answer. All right, 49. Which of the following statements are logically equivalent with one another? Number one, A, the prime of A union B. Number two, A prime, intersection B prime. For number three, A prime, union B prime. Did you go for one and two? One and three, two and three, or one, two and three? What do you think? Actually, the correct answer here is letter A. One and two are equivalent. In fact, in fact, this is guaranteed by what we call the Morgan's law. That is, according to the Morgan's law, uh, you could verify this using your truth table if you wish. That is, if you take the, the complement of the union, it's the same as the intersection of the complements of the two sets. Or similarly, 
if you take the complement of the intersection of two sets, it is simply the union of their complements. So we will go with, so therefore a union, a union B prime, quantity prime is equal to A prime intersection B prime courtesy of De Morgan's law, letter A. 50. A conditional is always true as long as its hypothesis is false. This statement is A, trivially true, B, vacuously true, C, substantially true, or D, arguably true. What do you think? Uh, with all honesty, with all honesty, letter C and D are just distractors uh, I made out of any context. We have to choose between A and B. So let's have the difference between trivially true and vacuously true. When we say trivially true, it is a conditional. A conditional is true as long as the conclusion is true. So for example, if you could recall last time, uh, if you have two conditionals P and Q, uh, true imp implies true, that's true. True implies false is false. False implies true is a true statement. And false implies false is a true statement. So I hope you could check your logic on that. So you could see, if the conclusion is false, take a look at these two, the first and the third rows here. So you see, since the conclusion, P, by the way, is the hypothesis or the premise, Q is the conclusion. You see, it's true here. The conclusion is true. You could see that regardless if it's true or false, the implication is always true. Whereas when we speak about vacuously true statements, a conditional is true as long as the hypothesis is false. So take a look at the second to the last and the last row here. The premise or the hypothesis is false. And if you could see, regardless if it's true or false, regardless if the conclusion is true or false, the entirety of the statement is always true. Hence, the correct answer here is B, vacuously true. I hope you got many items correct, and I hope that you learned something out of today's video. With that, TYVM, thank you very much, and a great day to one and all. God bless everyone.